NASA's plan to return humans to the moon is facing a major shakeup. Recent statements from its acting chief reveal doubts about relying solely on SpaceX's Starship, hardware still unproven for crewed lunar missions. As delays mount and pressure grows, NASA may be preparing a new solution to land on the moon faster, cheaper, and safer than ever before. Let's dive right in. NASA's plan to return humans to the moon is facing a turning point. For years, Artemis has symbolized America's return to deep space. But behind that bold vision, tension has quietly grown between NASA and SpaceX. And now, it's finally surfacing. Recently, NASA's acting administrator revealed something that caught the entire aerospace community off guard. The agency is reassessing its reliance on SpaceX's Starship. It's a careful phrase, but the meaning is clear. NASA is no longer fully confident that Starship will be ready in time. And that single decision could reshape how, and with whom, America reaches the moon again. When NASA first selected SpaceX in 2021 for the Artemis III lunar lander contract, it was a historic move. Elon Musk's team received $2.9 billion to develop a crewed version of Starship, a fully reusable spacecraft that could take astronauts to the lunar surface and bring them home. But as deadlines slipped, questions started piling up. Starship's incredible power came with equally massive technical hurdles, orbital refueling, thermal protection for lunar re-entry, and full human rating certification. Each successful test flight proved progress, yet none of them demonstrated what NASA truly needs, a complete end-to-end -end mission profile capable of safely landing astronauts. So as the schedule tightens, NASA's leadership is under pressure. Congress, contractors, and international partners all want one answer. When will Starship actually be ready? And that's why NASA has quietly begun to explore other options. The most unexpected twist came from Blue Origin. After losing to SpaceX in 2021, Jeff Bezos' company went back to the drawing board, and now it's suddenly in NASA's good graces again. During a recent press briefing, acting chief Sean Duffy praised Blue Origin's Blue Moon, Mark I lander as a realistic near-term option. What makes this significant is that Mark I isn't an experimental refueling concept like Starship. It's smaller, simpler, and already being built. Tests are scheduled for early 2026, and while it's not yet designed for crew, experts believe it could be upgraded relatively quickly. That gives NASA a safety net, a backup plan if Starship misses key milestones. Still, Mark I isn't perfect. To land humans and return safely, Blue Origin will eventually need some form of orbital refueling or assist lunar tanker system. Technology that's also still in development. In short, Blue Origin's advantage is schedule, not capability. They might move faster, but they're not immune to the same engineering challenges that SpaceX faces. And that's where NASA's dilemma deepens. With SpaceX under pressure and Blue Origin racing to catch up, NASA has turned to a familiar crowd. The legacy contractors. Companies like Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman have proposed a modern Apollo-style lander under a traditional cost-plus contract. At first glance, that sounds reassuring. These are the same companies that built spacecraft for the Apollo and shuttle eras. But there's a reason NASA moved away from that model. It's slow, expensive, and inflexible. According to internal estimates, this new old lander could cost up to 10 times more than SpaceX's original $2.9 billion award and still arrive late. And once NASA pays milestone funding to SpaceX and Blue Origin, walking away would trigger enormous penalties. That's the reality NASA faces. Every alternative carries risk, technical, financial, or political. And that's what's forcing the agency to look at something it once ignored. A middle path hiding in plain sight. While Starship dominates headlines, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy has quietly become the most capable operational rocket on Earth. It's reliable, flight-proven, and ready today. No prototypes, no waiting. Some engineers within NASA are starting to ask a radical question. Why not use Falcon Heavy for the Artemis missions? It's not just talk. The numbers actually work. A fully expendable Falcon Heavy can lift 63.8 metric tons to low Earth orbit. The combined mass of the Orion capsule, its European service module, 
in the ICPS upper stage is around 56 tons, well within Falcon Heavy's limits. This opens a game-changing scenario. Falcon Heavy could launch Orion and its upper stage together into orbit, skipping NASA's $2 billion per launch space launch system entirely. That alone could save billions, cut preparation time, and use a rocket that's already flight-proven. Even more impressive, Falcon Heavy's upper stages have enough performance margin to push Orion toward the moon, with Orion's own propulsion system completing the final burn. The trade-off? Orion wouldn't have enough fuel left to enter lunar orbit, but it could follow a free return trajectory, looping around the moon and coming straight back to Earth, a strategy successfully tested during Apollo 13. It's a smart, cost-effective, and achievable approach, the kind NASA used to rely on. Meanwhile, SpaceX has been quietly exploring its own Plan B. Instead of adapting Orion to Falcon Heavy, why not adapt Crew Dragon for lunar missions? Crew Dragon already has what Orion doesn't, a proven human rating, a strong safety record, and flight experience. SpaceX's internal concept shows a Falcon Heavy launching Crew Dragon toward lunar orbit, while another Falcon Heavy sends a separate lunar lander. The two vehicles rendezvous around the moon, the crew transfers, lands, and returns. This concept isn't fantasy. It's based on an actual mission SpaceX once pitched to NASA called Red Dragon a deep space version of Crew Dragon designed for cislunar or Mars missions. To make it happen, Dragon would need some upgrades. Reinforced heat shield for high-speed lunar re-entry, enhanced radiation shielding, deep space communications and navigation systems, and a propulsion stage for translunar and return burns. But compared to developing a brand new spacecraft from scratch, these upgrades are far more achievable. It's a clever backup, one that could keep Artemis alive even if Starship hits delays. At its core, NASA's current struggle isn't about rockets. It's about philosophy. SpaceX moves fast, breaks things, and learns from failure. NASA, on the other hand, operates with caution, documentation, and layers of review. That contrast worked during Commercial Crew, where SpaceX's rapid innovation delivered results faster and cheaper than anyone expected. But for Artemis, a politically sensitive mission, NASA is under pressure to avoid any risk at all. The question is, can NASA afford to play it safe when every delay risks losing global leadership in space? SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and Starship represent two generations of progress running in parallel. Falcon Heavy is the reliable workhorse, Starship is the revolutionary bet. Together, they could form the bridge that brings humans back to the moon. Faster, safer, and cheaper than anyone predicted. And perhaps that's the real story. The solution isn't one spacecraft or one company. It's a shift in mindset. From bureaucracy to boldness. From ownership to partnership. No matter how much NASA diversifies, all roads seem to lead back to SpaceX. Falcon Heavy is the only super heavy launcher flying today. Starship, for all its challenges, remains the only system that could make lunar landings routine in the long run. Even if Blue Origin or Lockheed succeed in their designs, they'll still rely on the reusable transport and fueling technologies SpaceX pioneered. It's not just about innovation, it's about momentum. NASA may test other paths, but the foundation of Artemis and America's return to the moon still depends on SpaceX hardware. So when people ask whether Elon Musk will still play a key role in Artemis, the answer is almost inevitable. He already does, not just as a contractor, but as the architect of the rockets making it all possible. And perhaps that's what NASA's new solution really means. Not replacing SpaceX, but finally recognizing that their way forward runs through it. And this is exactly why NASA's shift isn't a loss for SpaceX. It's proof that their technology now defines the pace of human space exploration. The real solution isn't just one rocket. It's a new mindset. Faster, smarter, and built on results, not promises. What this means is simple. The future of lunar missions, and eventually Mars, will rely on those who can deliver. So what do you think? Will NASA double down on SpaceX or spread its bets across competitors? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I read everyone. This is Space Hub, where we break down the real stories shaping our future beyond Earth. If you found value in today's video, hit like, subscribe, 
and turn on notifications so you never miss the next big breakthrough in space. Because what's coming next will change everything.